Um, yeah, I guess I can just, I'll do mine and then Avi can, can introduce himself. Yeah. And then I, I, I expect you'll hear a lot from Avi when we start getting to the ad creatives, because you'll start seeing in some of the stuff that we're doing, we succeed despite ourselves in some of these scenarios. So I think he'll be able to give some cool context there. So when, so be ready for that, but hi, I'm Justin. Um, you get my emails probably a lot. You got them if you're here because you had to have signed up from an email coming from me. Um, the president here at invisible PPC, uh, we do white label PPC for agencies. Uh, and the CMO at Kuware, which is our um, our full service uh, agency that focuses on local businesses. Uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, please. Um, I'm fairly active there. I guess I'm going to start posting again, but I answer messages like crazy or just shoot me an email. That's not like one that's monitored by someone else. That is my email. Shoot me an email if you have questions about anything I say today, anything about our products or anything along those lines. So Avi, do you want to do yours? Yeah, so mine on the social media, yeah, no guarantees that I'll respond on LinkedIn. So you send me an email. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to get me uh, there. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm I'm with Justin here with the, basically these two companies, Invisible PPC and Kuber. Those are the ones we are focused on. Uh, the stuff we are doing is a lot more for Invisible PPC agency owners right now. That's what we're talking about. So if you're an agency owner, trying to figure out how to get more. That's what you'll hear today. All right. Perfect. Um, and just a quick aside, um, if you're not familiar with Invisible PPC, I know a lot of you, this is your first webinar with us. Like we are a white label fulfillment partner for agencies and we specifically serve local businesses, right? So we're not going to be running SaaS ads, e-commerce ads, those types of things. We work directly with the agency owner, you, um, and do all the work behind the scenes while you manage the client relationship. And we can do this for Google ads, Facebook, YouTube, uh, local SEO and website development. So if you have a need for any of these for your current offerings or planning to get into those, you should absolutely use one of those, use the, the email that you saw there or just go to um, invisible PPC slash book dash a dash call. Um, all right. So I think the, the best way to kind of get started into anything is to kind of break down what we're going to be covering all at once. Like here, here's what to expect. So if you don't like what you're seeing here, uh, then you can head out, <laughs> like I guess at that point, because you don't need to, uh, you know, first thing I want to talk about briefly is really the, the massive problem we see facing agencies, especially is like, this has always been a problem, but I think it's getting, becoming more difficult um, as the market gets more saturated. So there's a, a problem that's facing everybody that I want to just talk about a little bit, live in for a little bit. And then, um, then we can then move into what I'd like to say is really the solution, um, that we've, we've come up with here. And if you're a, a subscriber to the blink, you would have seen like, um, I think it was two weeks ago, like Avi released a one that was talking about like client acquisition versus client retention. And I think we, we overemphasize the focus, like we overemphasize retention. Retention is not a growth engine. Retention helps with, you know, foundational things. So that's why you're going to see today. A lot of the, the solution comes from finding ways to profitably acquire more, more business. And that's what we'll be talking about today. And you'll see specifically, we believe that this can be best done for agencies via Facebook ads. So I'm going to break down the campaigns that, that we, that we've run for, you know, for multiple clients for ourselves at IPPC and also, uh, at, at, our, at Kuware. Um, and share kind of the breakdown and just the math in general of of what that will, you know, of what you can expect from your return on investment there. And then finally, just going to say it now, if you, uh, you'll you be getting value throughout this whole thing, but we do have an offer for you at the end. So if you're not down with that, you'll know exactly when to leave is right after I go through the math, because I do have an offer for people that are here on this webinar. So, all right, that's it. Let's talk about the problem. And, and Avi, uh, I'd like to spend a little bit of time here because you've you've been an agency owner longer than me, like significantly longer, an order of magnitude longer than I have. And um, I want to talk. I want to like I'll, I'm going to have some points up there, and it would be cool to get some of your feedback there since you've been in the business what like 16 years at this point. Um, so the problem really is that building repeatable growth systems is it's freaking hard. It's hard work to do that, and stuff that's proven gets unproven and things break. And then it's hard to like reinvent yourself. So I'm, I'm of a, a big believer uh, in this quote of, and I forget who said it, somebody more uh, famous and richer and <laughs> anything than, than me said this, what got you here won't get you there. Right. And it's a really important thing. And it can be, it cuts to the bone whenever you think about this, because like what took, what it took for you to get from zero to 20 K in MRR isn't going to get you likely from, you know, 20 to 
80 or whatever that breakdown is. So what people start seeing is when they had early success is that referrals start drying up. You're kind of at a cross sells for current clients. Like you're just kind of, eh, I, I don't know what else to sell these people, which is kind of breaking down um, what I was talking about with, you know, retention and expansion is important, but that's not your, that's not the only lever you should be pulling, especially early on. Um, cold outreach isn't moving the needle enough. We saw that there were some massive changes in terms of inboxing on the Google side of things, which has impacted this. And then eventually churn starts eating away because you're not pulling in enough, right? So Avi, when you're, when you, when you talk to agency owners and being one uh, for as long as you have, um, like, do these all resonate? What are some other things that I might be missing uh, when, yeah. when we're talking so that's, about these? Yeah. So actually the reference are drying up kind of applies not only to agency owners, to almost to everybody. Once you start, when you start out, great, you know some people, right? As an agency owner, you're starting, say you're getting in the dental business, you know your own dentist, you know, and they might even give you some competitions. If they are nice to you, they might give a friend's name who's in a different city, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you, that's the referral, how it starts out. But that runs out very quickly, you know, uh, so it's the same. Your own plumber, maybe, and they came by and you get them, right? And, and tell, so the referral is kind of very limiting. And the other one is your customers giving referrals. They, with all their good intentions, they don't have time in the day to, you know, call out on your behalf, right? So it's absolutely. So th these are the challenges uh, for sure we face. Uh, this is actually a perfect time, uh, Justin, to look at Jur Fuzul's question um, because he's hmm. talking about generally the problem he's facing. Look at it, but I think you'll answer it, but you want to read through and answer that to some level that yeah, let me how see. we will deal with this. This is a... Was, is that in Q... Oh, I have a thing blocking it's it. It's in right? Q&A. Okay, yeah. So he's using... Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, this is a good a good deleted. So using PPC reveal, uh, can you show me how to get more clients to get high quality leads? Share tactics nowadays for getting leads at a cheap price. Yes. Uh, so if you're using a tool... So a tool like PPC reveal, what it does is um, you're able to uncover like the different, like the people who are advertising. So if you're an agency that's going after a particular niche and you want to know who's at least bought into this whole concept of advertising, you're able to uncover those businesses. What it doesn't do is it doesn't like augment that data. So you're going to have to do either use a tool like hunters.io or some other tool to expand that, those data sets once you know the companies that are advertising, right? And then um, really what it turns into is once you've kind of uh, you've used that tool to identify who's advertising, you've used a tool like Hunters to um, get like their email address. In some cases, you don't even need to use that. Just go to their website, find their phone number or their or their email. It's going to be a catch all, and just give them a call, right? And then it goes into like kind of really pounding pavement at that point. There, um, let's see. There's other yeah. And the there. only other thing I would add is for the PPC reveal part is many times actually ppc reveal works really great when you mm -hmm. got them already talking to you because you yeah. can show them so it's not just as a prospecting tool that might be one way to look at it but even stronger way what we found is that we got them through a facebook ad which uh, uh justin will talk about and then when they're talking to them they say let me show you a competitive data you don't look that good right now that's impressive because you they filled a form or something and they contacted you now you have some extra data so that's mm -hmm. that's uh, something to keep in mind that you could use that to build some level of prospecting list and augment it. Or if you are building the list through by doing ads, which a lot of stuff we'll talk about today, then you use the tool to actually help you make the case. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that that's a that's a really good call out there. Um, and is there any trial for your course, your son? All like as of right now, all of the content on our site is absolutely free. Um, the only stuff that's not is for our, is like within our partnership. So don't worry about that. Like anything that's on the site, it's just trade us some information for that. And you're building an email list for one late niche. Another area that you could do it if you're just doing cold, which is worked. We, um, we use a tool at both companies called Coldlytics to build things out, but I'm starting to realize the order of magnitude that's required for some cold outreach is it's significantly more than I'm willing to do. Um, and you might be willing to do, especially at this stage, um, to get some of the stuff that you're, you're expecting there. So, okay. Um, all right. So now we've talked about the problem a little bit and everybody has a problem trying to prospect. Everybody's trying to figure out like, how do I get in front of folks? Um, the solution is you need to build an ad system where people are lining up to work with you. And I know that there's a barrier of entry here in terms of, hey, like, I don't want to spend money on ads. I don't have money for ads or those types of things. If you're in that case, then you're still going to be living in that kind of cold outreach realm. But 
you do need to be putting money back into your business to begin building ads where people are raising their hand, right? If they, because if you're always chasing, it's, it's going to be, you're going to burn out. So you need to get people coming to you. Um, so we like to do this with Facebook ads. And I know what you're what, like, probably some people are saying, Hey, invisible PPC, they're a Google ads company. It's like, yes, like we got our start as a white label Google ads company, but Google ads aren't necessarily the best for driving agency leads. Um, we had a long standing and, and Avi, I'd love to hear like some of your insights here after, after I go through it, it's, we've had a long standing kind of like um, just rule at, at IPBC is we will not run Google PPC ads for agencies. Like that's it. And one of the, the, the odd things that happens when we're like, our salespeople will come back to us and say, Hey, so-and-so would love to work with us with their clients, but they want to run a test on their agency. So I want to point out just kind of the inconsistency there real quick. So anybody that's been on here, that's been denied that from us, it's because it's apples and oranges, like a, a plumbing niche on Google ads where someone's like, I have a burst pipe is very different than trying to generate leads for someone's looking for a marketing agency. And no one's typing marketing agency near me or mar like any of those types of things that makes Google so effective. You have people that are just really in that research mode. So nobody's looking to do agency business right away. They're trying to, they're doing their research and trying to figure that out. And likely they're not just doing agency research. They're trying to figure out, do I hire? Do I do any of these other things? So Google ads aren't really the best place to start generating leads for your agency. Um, Facebook is also just really good at doing more, uh, like has slick, better targeting for us to be able to go after our, our ideal customer profile. Um, like the, the improvements to Google, to Facebook's instant forms have made it really easy for that, for people to raise their hand without having too much friction, but also, there are some drawbacks to that. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And yes, your audience is there. I know people are saying like, Facebook is, I mean, Facebook's lost users and, and whatever, and like people are on these different channels, but your audience is still there. And generally the people that you want to work with are still there. Um, I can't tell you like every, every single time I try doing a book a meeting campaign for agency owners on LinkedIn, how, how fast that fails. Like you guys are all there, but you spend way more time on Facebook without a doubt. Like more agency owners for me are going to be on Facebook and they are on LinkedIn, or at least they're going to be, um, like more power users at that point. Similarly, like in the pl in plumbing niches, like Facebook's a great place. They like to hang out there. They probably like they're they're probably hanging out on Instagram and going through things in their truck, right? So Facebook we found is a great place to find the types your types of customers and you have way more control over who you're going after and you're not basing it only on like someone typing in a high intent search keyword. Right? Um, Avi, anything you want to add to that, like from, from things that were just putting in there? Cause I know we've talked about this, like ad nausea. <laughs> like, I, I think you added, you said it perfectly, right? Basically it's just, if it is not urgent need, and if you're not com trying to protect the other question, you're trying to protect your brand, maybe that might be the only time when uh, people mm -hmm. do search for invisible PPC and there is competition bidding on it. So we have to do Google ads in that situation, yeah. right? Because otherwise our brand name is known enough that a competition is using that as keyword, right? So those are the situations where you got to do something. If you've got a marketing agency uh, uh, which has that problem, then you want to do ads, but all others, uh, Google ads. Otherwise, you got to get to people who were not looking for you, but they see the ad and they say, oh yeah, I want this. And that's Facebook, yep. basically. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So I think I've made the case for Facebook enough. And so um, if you're on board with that now, I'm going to start talking about the campaign and the campaign structure itself, which is what, you know, I build this entire thing on. So um, yeah, uh, that's why you're here. So without further ado, so I'm not a graphic designer. I don't pretend to play one on TV or anything along those lines. When I, when I put things together, they're fairly ugly. Uh, so bear with me, but really this campaign is broken down into, into two factors. Um, you have kind of the top of funnel. <laughs> view magnet, which is uh, what I refer to. Uh, yeah, I, these are the ways to build audiences. So you're us utilizing top of funnel videos to catch people's attention, right? And, the, and I'll break down how we target for those, the types of videos we're using for those. And then as you can see, we use about five to 7% of our ad budget is on top of funnel videos, just building audiences. That's it. Like we don't expect conversions from those. We don't expect anything. We know with that budget, we expect that to start building an audience, whether it be a through play or through a landing page, a landing page view. 
once they've qualified, once they've kind of gone through that view magnet offer, we they see the ad. If they see the ad long enough there, um, then they go into the remarketing side for the lead gen ads, right? And then similarly, then you have the more direct where you have your interest-based, job-based, or custom and lookalike audiences that you're building for your lead gen audience. So that kind of bypasses the view magnet audience. These are people that you've already targeted that you're going after um, that go into the lead gen ads themselves. Um, cool. So view magnet. So like I was like I was talking about here, they're designed for audience building and that's it. That's all they're there for. You gen generally use broad interest-based targeting um, because you want to cast a really, really wide net when you're doing this. You want to make, obviously you don't want to be like every person in the United States, that'd be silly. But if you're doing it for agencies, like, and I'll, I think I share an example of what we do for the agency side of things. It's like people interested in like pay-per-click, social media marketing, marketing in general. Like when, if people are willing to say they have that interest on Facebook, that means they're marketing nerds, which means they're likely an agency owner because those are the only people that are that nerdy about that, right? So we want to make sure that um, we have broad interest-based targeting there. And then we've tested this out um, uh, multiple times between a, a through play conversion goal or a landing page click. And I'll share some of the numbers there with that. But in general, what we've seen is through play is really the name of the game. Sending them to a landing page, that click is going to be a little bit more, is going to be expensive. And they're not in a place in the value journey to fill out anything on your site. So it's generally a wasted click. Uh, at that point, it does build a, re a retargeting audience for you in a similar way that any sort of traffic would, but it's not necessarily, I think, the best use of your budget when you're doing these really top of funnel view magnets, right? Um, so here's an example that we use for IPPC, you know, people who match media agency, conversion marketing, pay-per-click, um, and then making sure that we are in our main target locations and... <laughs> always make sure that your advantage custom audience is off. That's just like Facebook trying to really kind of <laughs> make more money or really just put your budget in places where it's less less fun for you. Um, pro tip, and this one is one I've, this one I haven't tested yet. And Avi, you, we may have, you may have tested this before on other things and I haven't. I just was told to do this by somebody and I shared with the team that we should do it. And this is something worth testing. So if you try this and it doesn't work, I'm just saying this is still a, hey, you can so, give this a shot. Yeah, so the problem with the, this could work with established, understood businesses. Mm -hmm. But if you're going after niche like plumbing, usually that page was not created by the owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just think of that way. It was created by their niece or somebody. So that's the problem. So you got to think about it if it is a, uh, most of the service businesses, those pages, in fact, it's when we work with them, we find, oh, they cannot find who owns the page. <laughs> so so given that, that's that will be the, my only concern that admins were many times people who are not the business owners. And almost yeah. all these cases, we want to reach the business owner. So, yeah. So but there'll be some sense. situations where it's true, but that's my main concern. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a very, very good and valid concern. And the person who recommended that I do this also targeted agencies. So if yes. you're targeting agencies, do this. And it'll work. If you, <laughs> that's 100%. Like I'm thinking about, like, you know, know where your data source is coming from, Justin. Gee. Yeah. Um, but uh, Now, if you do this, I mean, it might be not a bad idea to do this and it with business owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. then... Yeah, more likelihood, right? If they're business owner and admin, at least those ones, they might be a small number who uh, come out of that, but that might be worth it. Yep, exactly. Cool. And so here's kind of some of the breakdowns here. We had three different uh, ads running. None of them are really about pure white label. Like this one is, it's about the concept of white label where others like, what are the three myths of agencies and those things? Obviously, you know, we've been running these for a while. So fa Facebook is like, hey, this is this is the one that we want to attribute all your budget to. But you're looking at like you're you're seeing you know sub like like percentages of pennies for these types of views like and then getting like a, a a five to ten second through play. I think this one's actually we want twenty five percent of them to you know, to be qualified for the audience. Needs twenty five percent of the videos viewed, then we'll be remarketing to them um, with the lead ads, right? So you're, it's not big money, which is why you don't have to spend too much of your budget there. But it's a good way to prime the pump. We did this as well for um, one of for the plumbing business, where we went with the landing page views. We're able to generate a decent number of landing page views from this, but the the cost was significantly more. Um, and and it's just something to consider. It's it's really if you're using other tools like on your like to capture email addresses once they're on your site or anything along those lines, 
that might be worthwhile. But um, in this case, if you're using it just as the true view magnet, I would recommend staying with through plays. And they need they only need to be a couple, like maybe a minute, minute and a half video that you're doing. That is that is helpful there. But um, Avi, you're 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 way more the creative guy that I am when it comes to these types of things. Any um any tips or tricks you would want to give for people that are doing top of funnel videos, uh, oh, and, and how to yeah, make those so stand out. One thing I will say is think uh the first five seconds of the video are very important. Even though, like this one, for example, it says attention plumbers. That's great, but that's a small text. What is very obvious is the person there with the thumbnail, right? Which will be actually in the actual reality will be playing. So these are the two things to consider. One, what you say in five seconds, first five, five seconds, it could be even the words like attention plumbers, raise your hand or use the burning wallet. You guys know about the burning wallet? It's a gimmick you can buy online and you open the wallet and the money is burning, you close it, it closes. So th these are tricks which have nothing to do with the actual ad, but it gets attention. And then you say, hey, attention plumbers, are you burning your money? Whatever you need in the beginning, the hook, is a very, very important to get it right. Other one is don't start with the word plumbers. We can help you because when the ad is playing, usually people miss the first word. Mm -hmm. So it should be second or third word. Are you a plumber? Is a better one than plumbers? We can help you. So that's the creative tip. Those two things to watch for. Everything you want, attention one has to come up front, but don't use the first two words or something. If you've been watching TikTok, you'll know what I'm talking about. If it is a good one, people rewind because you missed the first word mm -hmm. as it plays through. So, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Great stuff there. Um, so yeah, in terms of like the view magnet and how that all kind of plays in, five to seven percent of the budget in broad interest based, show them the ads based off of what you're looking for, whether it's a landing page click or a through play to a certain percentage that becomes a new audience set or a part of an audience set you're using to, to send lead gen ads to. Likely it's probably going to be a subset of your uh, of your remarketing if you're doing pure remarketing as it stands. So that's generally the breakdown there for the view magnet portion of things. Um, let's talk lead gen. So, obvious, so obviously they're designed for, designed for generating leads. We've been big proponents of instant forms here. Um, and it's... I feel weird saying that because I'm such like a landing page guy, like almost like landing page purist on some things. Um, and because instant forms were kind of hot garbage up until probably the last six months or so, uh, when, when we started kind of running a, a, some more tests with those, but, uh, quick in, in the chat, how, who here is familiar with kind of the instant forms like feature in, in, in Facebook ads? I'll give you a second. Just toss like a number, say me, or, or do do anything if you're familiar. If you're not, do nothing. Okay. Where are we at? <laughs> Love them and hate them. Yeah. Good for quality. Me. Awesome. Okay. A few people not very familiar. I'd say most, I'd say it's almost like 50-50. Yeah, used to be a hundred percent agree, Shane. Yeah. Okay. So the concept, and I'll show what an instant form looks like in the breakdown of those things. But the whole concept of the instant form is for you is for someone to be able to to raise their hand. Um, it's for you to generate a lead without them having to leave Facebook, and for them to do it without having to fill too many form fields in, because it's going to utilize a lot of the data that's in there, and it generally primes them to update data versus what their default data is in there. So it creates a, a fairly a, a very low friction lead generation opportunity for your uh, for your clients and also allows you to create to add on as much friction as you'd like with multiple questions to make sure you're targeting getting the right getting the highest quality lead possible so it's a really easy way to do a balancing act between quality and quantity of leads without having to do landing page development and Facebook loves it when you keep people on Facebook. They love it when you use your features. So these will be, you know, a fraction, these types of leads will be a fraction of the cost. Not enough, like, I guess everything's a fraction if it's a part of, but probably 25 to 50%, uh, no, 50 to 75% cheaper than a landing page lead is what you could expect doing something uh, on instant forms. Um, so if you're not using those, they're they're super great. And they're also great to use for clients as well. Um, but yeah, so how it breaks down, is we have kind of three to four main audiences we're using depending on the the 
the campaigns are running and the niches that they're in. Um, view magnet audience. If we don't have a like a view magnet, so that top of funnel video, then we just omit it. Um, but if that's there, we'd have a view magnet audience or connect it back to our just standard remarketing. Um, it'd be either an interest-based or a job-based audience. And then a custom with potentially lookalikes layered in. Avi, I know you have a lot to say about lookalikes. Um, so if you want to talk a little bit about those, where to be wary with them um, and, and those types of things, that'd be, that'd be really cool too. So lookalike used to work a lot better earlier. The targeting has been just hard on Facebook. So that's all, you know, it's just not all bad, but it used to work a lot better before. So th th that's what it is. There is uh, something when you're talking about the landing pages versus lead gen. Yep. Jure has a question and I think yes. I'll just answer it for him. He, he's put up a landing page there. Jure, that's a great landing page. Everything is great. But the problem is what Justin already talked about that the lead uh, instant form ads are cheaper. So it becomes a challenge between, hey, you're going to pay 30 cents for this versus a dollar and then look at the quality. So all this mm -hmm. question about quality, and I think Justin already addressed that and that's not to be missed. That And because there are a lot, lot of comments also from people about quality, you can tighten the quality and increase the cost by increasing the friction by adding your questions, mm -hmm. right? So they basically... Almost all case, cases, it's not one versus the other. You're dialing in by, you add, keep adding questions, lesser forms you'll get, and the quality will keep increasing. There'll be a point at which you say, okay. So that's that's the, so Jure, the answer for your, your landing page is great. It's, it's great. It's got a great offer. It's explanation, ebook, uh, uh, and that's a great way to get it. But it's, the main concern will be that, hey, they got to leave the site, uh, the Facebook, and that, and, and that might be still okay if you if price point if it is working out for you. Yep. No, that's yeah, spot on. And when and you again, you have the flexibility to ask kind of whatever you need to 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 make sure they're qualified. One of one of my friends, um, Lauren, she has a company called Mongoose Media. Like they ask very very detailed personal questions for one of their clients because they need to know this information. But by the time they get to the handoff where it's like, hey, now we need to try like. Now we need to try and get this person on a phone call. They found it so much easier to get them on the call because that person had shared all of these details with them. Their cost per lead was, was high, probably even higher than a standard landing page, but their quality now almost created a lay down sale for them, right? So it's a matter of like moving that slider, right? Cool. All right. So kind of getting into the, and kind of the breakdowns you can see here, this is for one of our campaigns where um, we were use, utilizing, we broke up uh, lookalike and custom. There's been some folks that are saying layer them together if you have a low, like a sm too small of a custom audience. We have them split up as a test right now to see if that's still useful. And then we had a general interest and then more uh, interest in broad uh, from, from plumbing there and, and testing between the two there. For, um, for what is it, for invisible PPC, this is when we layered in customer list, lookalike, and through play kind of build off of that. And actually, let me go back to this one. This one, you can see how this broke down on average was $24.50 a lead. So these leads would be people filling out our instant form saying, yes, I want to meet with you, right? They're raising their hand to say, I'm a plumber. I need help. And it looks like you guys can do it, right? In this one, this is the same type of, of lead form that we're doing where we're saying, hey, we want to help you agency owner book, uh, uh, help you run ads for your clients. Right, so we did job-based, interest-based here with that customer list and lookalike, and we're getting leads for twenty-five dollars. People saying, "Yes, uh, Justin, I want to meet with you. Yes, I want to work with you guys." Um, here's the major, major caveat: <laughs> next to nobody is going to instantly book. Right, so you have, you have the, you generate the lead with the lead form, and at the end you have this option to say, to send them to your website. People, people do click that by the way, like they do and they do visit the page, but next to nobody does what's on that next step. These are leads you must be working, right? You're generating leads from people saying, Hey, yes, I want to work with you. And you need to be following up. 80% of them will follow up from the phone. So always ask the phone number in these cases, if, especially if you're trying to book meetings, book calls or anything like that, you need to know the phone number because you need to be following up. The other 20% come generally from email and text. So you have your email reminders and those types of things. But this is building you a hit list, 
that's what this is meant to do. That's what this strategy is meant to do. Um, I'd say less than less than one percent. And this is across. I I was at an event in Miami with you know three hundred other seven figure agency owners, and we were talking about this particular strategy and how this works. And everybody was like, "All right, who? How, how many people do book right away? Next to none. It turns into your your lead list. So at the beginning of the call." how to generate a, a list of solid leads of people to be reaching out to. This is how you do it. This is exactly how you do it. Um, your automations will catch some, but it's going to require some, some elbow grease. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the ads. Uh, Avi, any questions or anything that came through then before yeah, I so I've been answering them live. Uh, okay. Th this is, uh, there'll be no other better time. So we might as well answer this one. Uh, okay. uh, this is uh, from Alfredo about, what is the opportunity of reaching out to Spanish speaking local businesses? So that's a, the reason it's contrast, interesting is it's very contrast. Yeah, I'd say, yes, absolutely. If there are business owners who are Spanish speaking, there might be opportunity. But usually the question we get asked a lot more is uh, other side, which you're running an ad and I'm getting too many Spanish speaking uh, people filling in the form or coming in, they are looking for a job. So that's the that's the problem. So uh, if you did an ad for that business, especially say plumbing business in Spanish, that problem you will increase quite a lot. So it kind of depends. But yes, probably the Spanish speaking owners are underserved. I'll mm -hmm. give you that if that's what you're saying and reach out to them uh, that way. But be when you advertise on their behalf, the problem changes the other way that you get a lot more people seeking jobs and which is a problem, a spam no. problem uh, for the user point of view. So. No, it's like that question is just perfect from like where, like all the stuff we've been working on lately. We do have clients that um, that is a considerable edge for them in their in their niches where they, they do target um, Spanish speaking um, like business owners and their, their businesses are growing very, very well. Uh, so. It is, but then what Avi said, like you're almost like doubling or tripling your potential for more of those kind of like for for spam leads coming through that we'd run into that that you're trying to avoid if you're if it's you know specifically Spanish speaking owners that are serving like English speaking audiences, but also like it's it it gets messy, it gets super messy. But yeah, it's um there's a lot of opportunity there. Cool. All right, so we're gonna dive into the ads, and then yeah, Avi, I'll I'll have you talk a little bit more on these ones too, because again, creative. We talked about view magnets already, and there's a lot of things. And here's the thing: I like to be an open book. None of these are perfect. In fact, some of them are downright not 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 what they should be in some cases. But I I believe I wholeheartedly believe getting something out, seeing the numbers, and then iterating from there. Um, and so. For a view magnet, I'm less worried about these, where I would be very worried about even some of the first things. Like here, here are these three myths. Cool, whatever. This isn't pushing a, a effectively like a, a narrative of like, hey, I want you to book a meeting with me yet. This is me building an audience and trying to get them interested in it, right? That's what the goal of these three here are. And we talked, I think, a little bit about this already, but Avi, if you wanted to talk about Anything else on the attention seeking side from from videos at this level? And I think we've covered it enough. And like we can, I think we covered it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I give the tip. I think we covered it on the videos that you got to. First five seconds is important. Just pay attention yeah. to that. Yeah, and then I don't want people to forget that like static ads still work. Static imagery works very very well still, right? Um, and in these, I I don't. Every time I do my own, look look at my own ads, like I just see everything that's wrong with it. There's a lot of good stuff in here as well that I'll break down. Um, but static ads, like this is our best performing one. And this particular lead magnet, this isn't a booking meet, but booking a meeting ad actually, is it? Yeah. This is our book a meeting one. So we were booking meetings at around, I think 30 bucks, no 25. So the average is 25 on this one. I think it was, this was bringing the average down where it's saying, Hey, attention agency owner. So calling out there, um, stop managing paid ads on your own. By this point, they're generally familiar with us, uh, especially if they're coming from our uh, like our lookalikes from our customer lists or from anything along there. And then we kind of go into more deep funnel, like uh, specific copy. I'll break down kind of a copy formula that's that this deviates from a little bit, but it'll be something to take a look at. But, you know, simple but specific headlines, generally something that's going to stop, like scroll stopping. This one, it's bright colors and stands out. And it's that big stop 
right there. Like that's pushing for a, okay, I need to pay attention. Um, niche call out when it's um, calling out agency owners. You want this in copy and creative itself. Um, probably should have said something like agency owners in the ad. Uh, clear and visible next step, book a call. Uh, stands out pretty okay. Um, and then book now underneath. And then it speaks to a desired end result. Hey, you don't want to be running your paid ads anymore. Um, Avi, do you want to, uh, any, any insights there that you want to add in? Uh, no, nothing, uh, nothing there. But when there was a question again, um, uh, the Q and A is active that, Hey, I want to, uh, can I get the script of your ads? So one easy trick is you, Facebook has a, a mm, open transparency center, transparency center, where you can go and type business name, Kuwait or invisible. You'll see all our ads. Yep. You can directly, I mean, that's an easy way to copy and cheat from anybody including us, right? So just yep. go and do that, right? And I do have a fun script coming up for everybody, like a good breakdown that makes things a little bit easier. Yep. Um, again, this is another example of one. And this one is a, is particularly a, um, these are the lead ads. ads. So do you want to, do you want to talk a little bit about these ones, Avi? Well, um, this one is the lead ads? Yeah, uh, lead ads. Uh, yeah, that, I think, the copy is, okay, let me say this thing I didn't say about the copy. So one of the techniques of copying, uh, of, of doing the script is because the hook is so important, you do the main copy as one recording and record 10, 15 different hooks. Then you splice mm. those. So you end up with 15 ads because those first five seconds are so important. You'll end up with 15 and just try whichever works best, right? So so that's that's the big, big part of, try with many how to do because you don't you doing the main script 15 times is very difficult right and it's hard to even test really what are you testing once they're interested they're listening to it anyway right so that's not the uh, but the initial part is so so important that redo the initial part uh, with multiple do 15 you know recordings or so and then probably pick 10 of those and then splice those as the opener for your ad and that'll help quite a lot this process and uh, by the way this is something Again, Justin pointed out, we are not perfect. We screw this up all the time, but yeah. we kind of know it and then we go and fix it, right? Yep, awesome. All right, and yeah, so I think one thing we did see, and, and I, I don't have enough data points on this right now to speak on it, but I know in one of our niches, um, we saw higher, like when we looked back from the number of um, meetings that we were getting or like uh, leads for meetings that we were getting, we were seeing more spam, more spam form fills or, or less, less, yeah, I guess spam, we could call them more spam form fills coming from the actual static image than the videos themselves, um, which was an interesting stat. It's not something that says throw out static or only videos or only things like that, but really like when you're tracking these types of things, either you should be, or you want to partner with somebody that's going to go to that level to see like, is the creative moving the needle as expected all the way back to, um, the, the specific, you know, ad sets or creative levels that they're in. So that's something to consider as well. Um, nothing where I'm like, we need to have a seismic change in how all creative works at that point, but that there will be differences in how people act over time. All right. So I couldn't fit this, fill this in with like big text, but this is the basic ad flow that you'd want to be using here. Hey, niche, a niche call out emojis, her, right? Are you looking to do more desired end result and less secondary end result? And then if it's more and then more again, that's fine. But I love the, I love contextualizing things. Like, do you want to do more of this and less of this, right? Over the years, we've identified exactly how to overcome the problems in like the plumbing niche, you're connecting back or in the agency world or things like that. And we've helped over. So this is, this is where you start setting your, your proof. We've helped so-and-so people. If you don't have that many yet, um, you, you have to find a way to show proof in there, um, or you can omit it, but it's not going to be as strong. And we want to help you next. If that sounds like something you'd like to implement at your agency, at your plumbing business or whatever, at your you know HVAC business, at your whatever, I'd love to help. Click the button below and let's schedule some time to talk. So applying that to marketing agencies, hey, local marketing agencies, because at Invisible PVC, we want to work with agencies that serve local businesses. Local is an important word for us. Are you looking to add more revenue to your agency without having to handle the fulfillment yourself? Over the last 12 years, we have, we've identified exactly how to bolt on a new marketing service to your existing agency without you having to learn a new skill or even hire a new team member. We've helped over 1,300 agencies generate an additional five to six figures by using our white label PPC services, and we want to help you next. If that sounds like something you'd like to try at your agency, I'd love to help. Click the button below and let's schedule a time to talk. 
right? Really, like when you're using a framework like this, it gets really easy to fill these things in. And notice it's not one to one, but the 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 feel is still there, right? And it's those types of flows. And you can see in some of our copy, we don't follow it exactly. I want to actually run this as a, as a test, as this exact one, because I, I wrote it yesterday. Uh, I want to put this as an exact test against our best control and see if how, how it improves it. Because I, I bet this one, it will do significantly well because it is straight to the point um, and easy to read. One uh, So that's the basic kind of ad flow. You can use it really for any agency. One thing that people talk about, and we haven't tested this yet. Um, and like, Almost every marketing agency is talking about this approach and I've seen their numbers and they, they're they similar to ours is they like to add a personal approach to things. Like where at the beginning of what I just shared, they say something like, hey, this is me and my beautiful fiance or hey, this is me and some of my clients or hey, this is me hanging out with other industry leaders at these at like that also are serving these, these like niches, right? Um, generally what you wanna be doing if you go this route you find either, whether it's like a friend, um, a loved one or clients who are, who are okay with you using them in an advertisement because these will get seen all over the place, right? Um, that you can run this personal angle. Most of them see cost per, like their cost per lead from these personal angles that utilize that same kind of copy script that I have there. They're, they'll see around, you know, 35, like between 25 and $45 leads coming through, but it's really all about you and what the goal of your agency is. Like, at, even though like Avi and I are, you know, the co-owners of Invisible and like we're visible on these webinars, we're not as visible outside of our emails and those types of things. Like, and like we have like videos on YouTube, but the white label concept is, is less about, I guess, even like trying to push personal relationships um, there. So we haven't tested this one out. We might, I don't know, to be quite honest, if we do that, it would, um, but the rationale by the people who share these uh, types of ads is that they don't look like an ad, right? They don't look or feel like an ad. The problem is almost everybody's trying this one out now. So I'm just seeing like, like family photos of people. I don't know who the heck they are that it's, it's useless to me. It's scroll stops, but I don't click. I'm like, Oh, this is an ad. So it's creating a level of, and this is me just talking from my personal experience, but it's almost creating a, like, another step where I have to analyze even if like I'm getting the efficacy of like my, my social media platform. Cause like I'm seeing people who I don't know. Right. So yeah. I mean, Avi, do you have any, any thoughts, thoughts, feelings, emotions, or numbers? <laughs> Cause we're uh, yeah, not I don't have thoughts, experience feelings. with this. At least my wife will not want to be in yes. ad with me. Okay. <laughs> and, and uh, she might be okay with the family picture being there. I don't know. So, mm -hmm. so it, yeah, I, so I don't have personal experience doing this, but the idea is actually, if you know what's happening is first few seconds, anything which will stop them for first few seconds. Yeah. So see a personal image that might, you know, they associated with it and they feel, oh, this is not an ad. And just because of that, they stopped and mm -hmm. started reading your thing and you have rest of the stuff is interesting. That works. If yeah. so that, if that's how uh, that the video or starting of the image is working, absolutely it'll work for that yeah no i think i think yeah the the theory behind it works um because again the whole point is capturing like you got to capture that attention and then the next like first goal capture attention second goal keep attention mm -hmm. right so yeah so it's it's a sound theory all right so let's talk a little bit about the lead form um we don't have to spend too much time here this is our basic lead form that we do um here we have a qualifying question and i know we're going to be testing out some new things to add additional qualifiers but we just say, hey, do you own this insert, insert insert niche business company? Like, do you own it? Do you own or run a plumbing company, right? Then then it just then goes for name, like first name, last name, email, phone number, company name. Those are all auto filled in. So this section here, I probably should have done this one at a time so you could see each one. Um, I was trying to show like, hey, it's a four-step process where then it fills this in automatically and then lets them move on. And then they get their final privacy policy where then it gives us the information. Um, this is the last page. So this is kind of like your, your thank you page where you can tell them where to go next or say, Hey, schedule a time. Now you can schedule a time to meet uh, with us by clicking below schedule now. And it sends to that page, but most people don't end up doing that. Uh, they click, but they don't book, right? Like I said, these are now hot leads you chase versus expect the booking page to do the heavy lifting for you. Um, the more questions you have, likely the, the faster, I mean, the better quality they're going to be. And the faster you can get in touch with them, 
we have a whole thing. We had Chase Buckner on here from high level talk about this about a year ago, and it's still true. Like if you can, if you can follow up with them in the first five minutes of somebody who filled this form out, they're way more likely to one answer the phone and do business with you, or at least move to that next step. Right. So when you're integrating these, making sure that there, there is a timeliness factor to it as well, that the, the more question you ask, the higher the quality in general, and the faster you can, the speed to lead is going to be absolutely critical. And then booking that, that actual like discovery call. Right. And that's why tools like high level and those things exist. Um, cool. If you're dealing with low quality, i I don't even have to say this anymore. More qualifiers, more qualifiers, more qualifiers. If there's a quality issue, right. Um, if that's still not working, you do have an option between more volume for the form types between more volume or higher intent. All it does is it changes, uh, it has a, a quick fill out form where all they have to do is click a button where the higher intent has them review and slide, right? So more volume, it's really, really easy, like zero friction, higher intent adds another level of it, right? Just expect in like CPC uh, cost per lead to increase, but potential um, garbage leads to be filtered out a little bit more. So those are two ways to, to get uh, to handle that. Um, before I move on into, into the math and kind of closing this thing out, um, Avi, any questions in there before I, before I run into it? Uh, no, nothing there. There are a few questions, but I think we'll take it. They are general about quite a few okay. things. Uh, for example, one question is basically, how do you figure out how long to run the ads? Mm -hmm. and, okay. and maybe I'll answer that. Basically, yeah. for this is a statistical question, right? So... I did ask Manish just now, and we might have a page where we, we had a statistical calculator. You enter how many conversions you have had, how many clicks you have. So it's basically a question, how, uh, how long becomes a question of how many events have occurred. That's how you decide how long you run the ads uh, uh, and that. And there are a few others. We'll address them later. Yeah, probably. but the, the important thing is that you're asking the right question because you need to have a timeline in mind. You don't want to run anything into perpetuity, yep. right? You want to have a timeline to know like if something's working and if it's not, and then when to move. But okay, cool. So I want to talk a little bit about the numbers and what to expect at each stage, uh, each stage here. So if we're looking at, you know, average like lead cost between $25 and $30, $35. So those are the people again filling out the lead instant form. Very few are booked immediately. So don't panic. And I'm not even factor that factoring that into my calculations here. Like I'm taking book immediately. Nope, not like just pretend zero at that point. If you have a lead to meeting rate that you should be looking at there is going to be between 15 and 20%. So someone that like, so someone that you're able to get on the phone um, that filled out that form and the, fa the faster you get to them, the more likely you're going to see an increase in that. And then your industry standard close rate, once you've got them on uh, kind of in your, in your system should be around 20%. What that kind of turns into for you is um, it, it gets, it gets pretty nice. So in your first month, if you're running a system like this, and using those types of ads, you have the, the offer kind of in place, you have everything moving, you have your follow-up all done there. You could expect to close in your first month, um, what is it? Like three closed deals. So if your average deal size is about $2,000, that's gonna put you at a ROAS of about three, which isn't great yet. At least ROAS collected is three. ROAS booked, if you have a $2,000 average deal for a six month, uh, six -month uh, contract, your ROAS booked is about 19. Right. And these things start, and I did this in a six month increment, just because this is really your guaranteed cash at that point from what to expect from the, from the contracts, assuming, you know, people don't break contracts or something, something unforeseen happens. Right. So if you're following a system like this, spending roughly $2,000 a month on ads to get all this stuff out there, and you've got your system humming, you could expect to book in a six month period around $806,000. And cash collected in that six month period being around 134. So that's a really great way. Uh, I don't, I don't think there's anybody in here that's saying like, no, I don't want to book that much more money or collect that much more money on an ad spend total in a six month period of 12 K. Right. So these, uh, this is kind of, you know, a case of what can happen. There's going to be all these different factors that come into place in terms of lead cost, booking rate, and those types of things. But if you're hitting just some of the averages there, you'll be in really great shape and, um, getting people to line up to speak with you, people who are excited to work with you, right? And here's kind of another way to visualize the data in terms of where you can start seeing your cash collected, obviously growing there um, each month um, without having to spend an additional amount of money because now you're getting the residuals from that, right? So 
it's a very lucrative way. Uh, using ads is a very is what I believe to be the fastest way to generate more clients for you at a pretty modest spend. Um, when you're looking at like what you're what you're collecting over that period of time. Um, so the big, 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 big thing, like fortune is in the follow up. You will not get these numbers if you aren't following up these leads and doing it quickly, right? Use email, text, and just pick up the phone. You'd be surprised like how okay people are with phone calls, um, especially if they've you know, requested some type of information from you versus cold calls. No one likes those, right? Um, so before I get into the kind of uh, the questions area for anything that's left over, I wanted to talk to you about you know, what we're doing here. Um, we... You can do all this stuff. You can use the scripts that we had. You can use kind of like the stuff that you learned from the ad creatives, the ad uh, ad campaign structures, the targeting structures, all those things. Um, or you could have us do it for you. Um, we do have we have a uh, a program we've been running with really right now only eight spots still available for it, and we'll be having very limited monthly onboardings for this because our core business is white label PPC. Um, but we want to help you get more customers. We want to help you get more people lining up to work with you. And so we do everything that we shared up there. We take care of all that for you. So we have the high performing creative and ad copy, video editing, help with script writing, ongoing management of the account, lead quality monitoring. Remember what I was saying? Like we go all the way to the ad itself. Um, campaign optimization and testings. This is across the board, creatives, forms, audiences, conversion actions, Facebook CRM integration for lead delivery. So lead, one of the problems with lead forms is they don't play well with other systems. We've got that for you, right? So we'll take care of all that. Um, the setup fee is $14.85. Um, and then our monthly management is 15% of ad spend um, with a minimum charge of $9.95 a month. So that's, and it's a three-month contract to work with us. Uh, you're, it goes month to month right after that. But that's that's the deal there. And then one, of, I didn't put a slide for the actual special offer is that um, if you're, if you're, not a partner with us yet, and you've been on the fence and you're like, hey, I need to get more clients, we will, um, you, you'll get partnership for a dollar. Um, so we'll cut down that partnership price point there if you're willing to kind of come in and have us start running the, these ads for you there. So if that's interesting at all, uh, you can shoot me an email uh, go, or go to that link right there, learn more about the program and book a meeting with me. Like it is going directly to my calendar. We'll be able to chat about this, um, about the program itself, and um, how to get you in there. But I would recommend doing that now or or by the end of today because I'm no, uh, my calendars, I'm traveling next week. So my calendar's a little tight. So you're going to want to get in there because we are only taking, filling in these these last eight spots before we kind of go into our limited monthly onboarding rollouts. So just something to consider there. Here's a breakdown of what's included, what's not included. Um, you'll have the report on this. I'll share it with you. When we have our call, we can do that. The big thing that we don't do is we we don't do the raw footage. Um, obviously, you pay for your Facebook ad spend. Um, we don't build the actual assets of like your Facebook page or those things. We don't build you your lead magnet. Um, and we don't do the lead follow-up. We'll get everything set for you to work those leads. But like I said, Fortune is in that follow-up, but you do need to start building that line. And we'd love to help you do that. So again, invisiblepb.com slash agency, agency dash lead dash ads. Um, go check that out and, um, hopefully I'll be able to talk to some of you soon. Um, that all said, thank you so much. I hope you got a lot out of this today. Um, happy to answer a few more questions. We're at, we have about four minutes left. I like to be super respectful of time, but if we go over answering some people's questions, that's fine by me too, as long as it's fine by you. So, all right, what do we got? So, uh, one question, which is directly relevant is, uh, if you can go back to the, actually, it might be good to just go back to the offer page. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, what is the ad spend? level for this program. So this is general answer, which I say to everybody and including your clients, you should. If somebody is charging you to manage something, uh, to manage your ads, you should at least spend as much the management cost is because you don't want to pay more for management and less for ads, right? So here, the monthly is like a minimum is 995. So if you spend a little, you say, oh, let's do it 500. It just makes no sense. You're paying somebody 995 to manage it. And you want to just, the real thing, which actually makes the difference will be actual money spent to Facebook, right? So so 1,000 will be the minimum. But I would recommend if you can, just go to 2,000 or so. That really yeah. suddenly changes what all can be done with those ads, right? Mm -hmm. So that hopefully, Justin, you agree with kind of how yeah. we start I out also? 
that's always my big philosophy. Like whenever we talk with people and then I, I like how you connected that back to for even their clients as well, because like, they're not going to feel good about spending 500 bucks on something. They're paying you $1,500 to manage. Right. Yep. Just like you wouldn't feel great about us spending $500 a month on something. You're, you're spending $995 on a month with us. Right. We, you want to feel good about your investment there. Uh, and you want to make sure that the proportions are right. The other thing, why 2000 is a good number. And really the, the ad, budget should be a function of some of those numbers I had in that sheet. Um, so what I can do is I'll share that sheet with the assumptions in it. When I send the recording, I'll share that sheet and you can tinker around with those numbers and say like, Hey, actually my close rate is awesome. I'm killing it. I close 30%. Great. That'll, that'll tell you kind of like what like you can work the numbers to see what the budget needs to be for you to have. Generally what you'd want to have is, is your initial collected row as to be between three and four, knowing that you're going to be catching more money in that, in the subsequent months. So I'll send that over. Uh, and it's, this is recorded. So I'll be able to hold myself to it. I'll send that sheet over in the follow-up email tomorrow with the recording and we'll have it on the page just so you can use that. Cause that'll help. But 2000 bare minimum, you no, know, like is generally what I think is going to be the case. A thousand, it's just going to be slower. Um, so if you want to, if you want to move and get the most out of your investment and what you're spending on management, um, you'd probably want to speed that thing up with around 2k. Yeah. And uh, one question is uh, that do we help with the offer? Yes. So this is actually, I mean, this is true partnership where we actually will tell you, no, not that. And if even for the building the asset, we'll give you the ideas. Yeah, This is asset. You might have something which you can, and you can build this asset if you're doing the lead generation uh, download kind of a things, right? Uh, we will help you with that. Even with the scripting, with the video, all those things will help you. But the, the big part is, I think if you want to say what you have to do yourself is, of course, the follow-up, right, is mm -hmm. the big part, right? We don't do anything once you get it. The other part is if there is a if and which will be needed, a video recording, you got to do that. But you don't have to worry about editing. But you got to do, we'll help you with the script and ideas, but you got to record the video and send it to yeah. us because it needs to be personalized. It needs to have you or mm -hmm. uh, somebody from your team talking, right? That's why the video. But we will take care of, you know, slicing and dicing and taking the video and doing it uh, uh, fixed for you. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Anything else? If not, I mean, we ended right on time, which is a rare, rare thing for us, but hey. Uh, there is a question. This is do, in our IPPC services. Do we offer wealth management, private equity investment uh, advisor niche? I don't know the answer, actually. Uh, I'm going to just push this. Yeah, too. I think my I, my belief is, and I've been, I'm wrong on this more than anybody. If it's you're doing it for consumers, not for, like an individual versus like a business, then I think we're good. Cause we have, but I know we had CPAs as one, but that's not exactly wealth management. Um, but yeah, let's see what Chin says. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so actually I just said, get in touch with Anna. I answered with the email address. How do you okay, address? Cool. Right. Great. Uh, yeah. Information uh, you share available on Blue PPC. Yeah. All the information we share is available in Visible PPC Partner Program. Uh, absolutely. And also want to say that this information you will get directly. So mm -hmm. I'm, we are not trying to plug in that join our program necessarily. There's a no. lot more there, but this you will get. If you're at the webinar, you will get all this recording and everything already available. You don't have to join any program, but of course we welcome you in the program. There's a lot more stuff, everything we have yeah. done in past and continue and great place to come and ask questions and meet exactly. Justin again in office hours, you know? Yep. It's, it's one of my favorite Wednesdays. It's a good time. Um, awesome. Well, again, thanks. Thank you everybody so much for sticking around. Like we had a really good retention rate as I could see on this one. So I appreciate you. Um, if you're looking for some help, hopefully uh, you got on my calendar already. Uh, try to get on, try to find a time today. Try not to get on my calendar for today. Book something today for like tomorrow, next week, whenever. Um, and I'll be looking forward to chatting and uh, we'll see you again. And like, what it in a month from now that next thursday for our next webinar so again thank you all so much